So the next part of the interview with Chris Thomas, Department for Infrastructure. The airport is, a, is, is a, such a big subject, I and mean, this is now we're moving on to what's happened with, uh, I mean, you couldn't be, couldn't be any worse if you tried, because you had, you had problems on the airport, and then we had all this fog as well. I mean, it was just like a, a bit of a nightmare for so many people. Yeah. But I hear so many stories about the, the landing situation. Maybe you want to clarify it okay. from the horse's mouth. Have we got a system that is worthy and useful and uh, up, to, up to speed? So we've got a new instrument landing system that's been uh, nearly three years, or more, around three years, putting it into place. Is this cost, the Italian or cost three, No, 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 it costs three million pounds. This is an instrument landing system. So right. this is on the main runway, not on the cross runway, on the main runway. Oh. Works from both ends. That's why it's got two different numbers. Mm. Um, an instrument landing system was put in place 20 years, 20 years ago. Um, it's new. I don't want to get into the argument that the pilots are having with me and others about whether it's a replacement or whether it's an upgrade. It's, it works. Um, it's new. Um, you know, something 20 years ago will, will, will be different from something uh, now. So it's it help in, in bad weather. Is that what it's? So it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't change the uh, cloud base level. It doesn't change visibility levels. I accept all of that. I've always known all of that. But it is a new instrument landing system that um, replaces a system that was, you know, was likely to fall over mm. at a random time. And now there's been a three million, nearly three million pounds expenditure on replacing that. What is it? New lights or is it? So it's not. It's not lights. No. It's not. Um, it's not based on the ground. On. It's not not based on ground radar, it's not based on satellite radar, it's not based on all of those sorts of things, it's essentially the instrument landing system. So as far as I understand it, roughly speaking, and I'm not, I'm not David Ashford, I haven't done loads of Googling and found out exactly what it is, but as far as I know, 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 it's something to do with beams of lights going yeah. across, planes have something similar and essentially it helps them in terms of when they're landing, you don't need it for but taking off, that's why it's good. The, the cloud cover then? So, so and then air, uh, airports have CAT status, and that depends on what mountains you've got in the way, mm -hmm. what what lights you've got. We've got the, you know that, that's a fifteen a fifteen year year issue away ages ago away because um, when we extended the runway, you know there's, there's a sea at one end now. So if we wanted to have lights that would help people at that end of the runway, we'd have to have an island on which to put the lights or a mm -hmm. or a mast or something, and it, and it gets really relatively deep and it's re relatively rough the sea around the Isle of Man and there's mm -hmm. a lot of wind around the Isle of Man. So so therefore that's relatively tricky. Also the state of cat status depends on the length of the runway. Mm -hmm. It also depends on what the airlines and the pilots I, I, are trained. Okay, so there's, so there's, lot, there, there. there's lots of things yes. that depend on the cat status. We could spend lots more money on on, on, on the airport, and that's the and sort what of cat status. The, is the we're, we're cat one, the same as London City Airport for different reasons, the same as some other airports. What about Jersey and Guernsey. Um, I, I don't, don't want to pronounce categorically on both Jersey and Guernsey, but you know Heathrow, J JFK, and so on. A Cat Three, that's as right. high as you go. But there are different types of Cat status yeah. in, in, in inside these ones. So Cat One's J the lowest J you can Jersey's have. Jersey's also been replacing its they OLS. Are. Cat One's the lowest of us, basically. I basically believe that Cat One's the lowest. Right. Yeah, I've never heard of any airport that's, uh, that's, uh, that's so dangerous. It's below Cat One. I, I get that point, but you know, is that good enough? I mean, is it? So it's a, it's a question of cost benefit. You know, so we, we you know we'd be better off in some senses if we move the if they um, after the second. Second World War, they built the airport at Jerby. I know, the amount of times I've heard that. <laughs> so, so that's where we are. You know, there are yeah. there, there are reasons. If you look at the uh, if you look at our uh, the report that's going to be debated in April, you know, we will have to look again, perhaps at the Jerby um, yeah. of Jerby alternative. Okay, but what went on? You just just pass that over. I mean, just we're building it. Sorry, you know. <laughs> no, but that's all right. That's no, right. Pass it. I didn't actually <laughs> stop me. You're going to move to Jerby? We're not. We're not. But that's <laughs> one of the things. That's one of the things that's considered as a long term option. You know, because okay. uh, when you're planning well, an that airport, would cost you, a lot of money, that would cost a lot of money and you'll so, would, so would improving the cat status yeah. and that's why I enjoy the discussion with the pilots because yeah. I've been in I've, I've but, had them in but what went rooms. on was that obviously we, so, you had an upgrade going on the weather was rubbish yeah. and it all went you know belly up yeah, I'm going to pick, I'm going to mention an, another civil servant's name. I know this is probably very improper, but I'm sure he's big enough for it. You know, I think A.D. Cowan has had his Michael Fish moment and all of that. You know, because this wasn't randomly chosen March. There was a meteorological report, oh. and although the public don't want to believe it, in actual fact, once the sea gets a bit uh, warmer, there's quite a lot of likelihood in, in some fog. of the summer months of more fo yeah. fog. So there was a there was a meteorological report. It's not the only factor. There are other factors, as the yes. chief minister made clear, to do with 
you know, what was patterns of travel, TT and all of that. But essentially March was chosen and then March wasn't a typical March because we had that very cold weather, the three days of snow, which then affected us for a long time. The airlines have been involved in this for 18 months, I understand. Um, the public was massively disrupted. Huge apologies to them. Okay, we have an apology. I, I, I'm you always, I, you know, 17% of flights were either cancelled or delayed no, in, much, in, the, in, in March, you know, wow. 17, 17% of flights. I think it might be so 10%, 10 were cancelled, 7% yeah. were delayed. That's deeply unfortunate, but uh, um, poor old, poor old AD Cowell was deeply unlucky. What about something? He's retiring soon, I'm, you know, I'm, oh, you never know, you never know. It might be, his, it might give, he might be remembered for his Michael Fish moment in the March thing. Wow. <laughs> um, this, I was mentioned about Italian system. I mean, this is another thing. So that's that's radar. I hear, yeah, but okay, but I hear it from people, you know, and, and let's clear it up. You, the system was put in a few years ago, an Italian system, I think. Yeah. That's never been signed off. Is this just one of those rumors? Well, again, this is this, you know, this is, is a massively technical area, and I try my best to try and simplify and summarize technical areas. But you have procedures around the ground on at the airport to do with movements of fire engines and planes and people and other vehicles around the ground. You have radar up in the um, up in you know, going up into the, up into the sky. You also and that part one of our radars definitely is Italian and it's definitely got Leonardo in its name. <laughs> Has it, it been it, signed off? And it didn't, it didn't, you know, that whole programme process didn't go quite as well it as didn't, planned. It didn't or it did get signed off? Please, yes or no? Well, did it, it it it, it, I'm sure it works in part. No, no, but no. I'm no. Sure, I'm did sure it get it signed off? Because that's what I keep hearing the other one's still running because this one can't yeah, be signed off. Yeah, I think, that's the, I think right. that's, I think that's the case. So we've got a new system that they paid for before your time mm -hmm. that was... Uh, so there's, so never signed off. But uh, I'm not one to look back. I'm into fixing problems. Yeah, I'm, I'm into here fixing. to ask the questions. You answer what we can, and yeah, I'll pass it. It's not your fault it, on this thing, and it's not your fault that they so, bore so it. So we have issues. We have issues in terms of moving and pe people around the airport. We have issues like we already discussed in terms of lower visibility yeah. and getting airports in. It's, well, they can all be fixed with more money right. being spent, and so therefore okay, that's okay, why okay, that's, please, that's, please, that's please. where we are. So we have a system. That it's it, it not signed off. We have the original system, which is presumably coming near to its end of its life, because the other system was bought to replace the original it's, it's, system. It's more, that, it's more than that. You know, inside the air traffic control tower, um, not everything was replaced. Some of the older equipment was put back inside yeah. the air traffic control tower. I really feel for the for the, the men and women inside the air traffic control tower because they're professionals and they've been put under a lot of stress by the public and the media. And essentially, you know, their job has become harder and harder. There aren't. Quite and you haven't got of enough of them there because enough you're of them. shutting the airport. You, I've been on one of those when yeah. I was literally listening to the EasyJet um, uh, uh, pilot uh, going, the airport shut and until what, 8. And the airport, yeah, that's right. And so therefore what that means is the um, that airport, that plane is arriving later than scheduled. So they don't yeah. have their regulated brakes yes. and the air traffic control to it to... to, to, to but this has gone on for a long time. Now, to, to mess up, it is. It has gone on for a long time. We'll, we'll talk about it in, de in detail and we'll explain. But they don't right. mess up. They don't do it. They don't choose those regulated times, those regulated breaks to to upset the Manx public, the travelling public more generally. They're not having tea breaks like 1970s I trade totally, unions. I totally, I think anyone understands safety they're, they're and they're regula done. They're regulated breaks. You haven't got enough people. Let's so therefore we've, we've, recruit, we've been recruiting people for since, a long time. since uh, October, November time right. and we've made offers, we've made offers. And, you can't uh, get them to come here? And or? It's, been tr it's been difficult as it is in many, many other yeah. airports and I hope we'll begin to do that. We're also looking to remediate the um, the tower situation with the use of technology, and that's an important part of the report that Tim Will would debate in April. But I don't want people to focus solely on the air traffic control tower. Of course, we need tough procedures, you know, because it's, a, it's an unsafe environment potentially with planes right. landing on right. vehicles. It's, we, we've got to have a um, we've got to have competent people up there. It's not something you can just walk I, I, in and start I, I, doing. Everyone gets that. Everyone says that. Look, it's a certain team here. Let, let's let's really get down to it. People want to travel. From A to B, yeah. and they want certainty. Yeah. But we've got fog issues, we've got radar issues, we've got whatever you want to call it issues, plus air traffic control, all added into the mix. That yeah. people go, will I get off or not? I mean, I'm sure like you, I now travel that, a day that, earlier than I have to, that, just because I'm not sure. And that's what's unfortunate. Going to that's unfortunate. So this we're trying to address it all in one go. Right. But basically, the public should understand. You should understand that there. You know. I, we, I'm, we've been visited by EasyJet, Logan Air. We have a good relationship. Emerald. I haven't met us yet, but I'm hoping it's you know it's good. But basically, we, under the airlines compensation arrangements of the EU directive, 
obviously you know they're only responsible if if, if X Y Z is the situation. Um, we're not, we can't control what airlines do. You know, no. quite, I, I've answered questions in keys about the fact that a lot of the d delays and cancellations aren't directly related to anything at the at the airport because mm -hmm. you know it's unfortunate that we have the last flight coming into the Isle of Man and then it has to get out again other than to do the first flight somewhere else the following morning in one of the, for one of the airlines. So we ha we have a, we have less than ideal situation at the airport and with our air services. Okay. I announced when I came into role right. in June 20, 2022, it was my main priority alongside buses, and we've done a lot to fix it, and we've still and got a lot more to go, and that's why we're proposing right. to Tim World an incremental approach to, to get money spent in certain areas, and parking is a very small part of that. You've always been for open, honest, and transparency, haven't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. How much is the uh, underwriting of uh, Logan Air to Heathrow costing us. That's Did a commercial you? negotiation, but oh it's coming. Come it's on, coming come from. On, come on. Well, you, you'd, be, you'd, you'd be asking that question again if you were the backbencher, you would, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, it, wouldn't I you? mean, um, uh, well, I, I, of course I, you I, would. I don't, but I wouldn't expect an answer because at the end of the day, it's, um, it's our money that we should know what's going on. And yeah, and it is, it, it, it is public inside. It is public in. It is public inside the things, but it's um, you know, it's hundreds of thousands. It's continued now to um, okay. For, let me, for, let me, for, let me just, for some time. Does it not kick in only when there's less than so many people on board? That's is, true. As is well. that a true one, or is that so? There's money automatically plus That's extra true. money. Is it? There's well, it, it started from the patient transfer contract. So Logan now yes. have the patient transfer contract. That's uh, under discussion because that's got a certain life. Yes. Um, you know, it's kept, this came out of the COVID period. How can it be commercially now, sensitive? It's now, it's now um, because uh, because you've got to treat all airlines equally. It's not only um, so. If I B had it right, so also we, uh, each uh, each passenger, each airline plays a, a fee for each of the. Um, I understand. Each but if Fly B had come back and they were going to do the Heathrow, were they? I mean, that, that was would they have automatically been available to get what, uh, information so they could bid? Or how is it? Well, totally that's, secret. That's, I don't, that's it's, not, it's not totally secret. All expenditure of public funds is, uh, is you know, is, has got to be accounted for. Are you uh, are you comfortable then with that regime? I'm and did you start I, it? Was that before your time? I can't remember. Well, I've done a lot to put the regime on a sounder footing, and that's where we are. We're now in a much sounder you're footing. With it? Well, this is all covered in the um, this is all covered in the um, in the airport report, which is being debated in April. Can we not run Heathrow without subsidy? Well, uh, there, is that that's, the a, that's a question that needs to be asked. I've, I've identified for you in the first interview, and I'm doing it again now. We've we've got a massive yes. mismatch between revenue and, and expenditure and you know DOI is not even directly responsible for um, those sorts yeah. of things because um, airport passenger duty goes to Treasury there's a thing called the economic fund and that pays remember, money, that pays the money for this sort of thing. is exactly the same as the UK I mean uh, under Eddie Tier this drove me mad because yeah. you know, the UK put it up the Isle of Man just puts it up you know it's, it's free money isn't it basically, I think in places the in the UK now they've reduced it as well uh, well I don't know. I mean I think Scotland's got its own arrangements with yeah, the but outers. there are there are senior politicians who are talking about filling that gap that eight million pound gap or whatever it is with a, an actual additional passenger tax you know, if I can't, if people are not going to pay money um, for anything to do with what they spend in the airport, because most airports it's have a commercial load to, yeah. So, so you know, we, that's where we are. Money's, mon you know, we've got a structural financial deficit both in capital terms and in revenue terms. The airport's one of the parts okay. of DOI that has a subvention, and we've got lots of capital projects which are all laid out, hinted okay. at, and there'll be loads more debate. But what I think I want you to end this with yeah. is, I think you know, and I know, and I want to make sure that politicians know and the public agree that um, that the airport has to be a priority because getting on and off our island is absolutely fundamental. And my last bit, and you'll probably know exactly where I'm going with this, is the, the feeling when you arrive and that awful passenger arrival hall with no hardly any chairs left in there yeah. and, and the toilets, I, I, I check them almost every time now just to see what state we've got, yeah. and the wait of 20 minutes to get your luggage and nothing to look at, nothing that's, yeah. you know, actually full of yeah. Video shouldn't it showing welcome to the Isle of Man and well, it's beginning welcome to start. here. And we were delighted to receive um, fifteen thousand pounds from the DFE visit Isle of Man to buy our new trollers. Yeah, and we've invited. They don't fit or something? Do they? Is well, that true? Because they're so old, the ones that they were replacing, they don't actually make the uh, make the uh, so, containers for. They don't make the same size trolley anymore. So, so that's all being adjusted. Oh, that's well. being adjusted. And we, you know, delighted to work with Visit Isle of Man and DFE yeah. to actually to improve make it a that place experience that you look at forward the sea to terminal coming. and, and yeah. in Liverpool. And that's right. why I meet regularly with Visit Isle of Man and I meet regularly. With, You're um, on it lots anyway. of people. On it. We're on it, yeah. Okay. But the money's tight, and so therefore, you know, it's easy to be a politician if you just talk about expenditure. Mature politicians have to talk about income as well. That could be my mantra in every interview, could end like that. <laughs> <laughs>